Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. We are on episode number 40. And today, if you watched, well, if you watched the previous episode, you'll notice we did a little bit on module development and talked about Drupal renderable arrays or render arrays. And we went over that in Drupal 7 and we came up with this module that you see here. It has a hook menu implementation has a mypage-html page and a mypage-renderable page. The first one just outputs straight HTML, similar to how at least I used to do it a lot in Drupal 6. And the other one uses the new render arrays of Drupal 7 and shows a quick example of how to do that. So you can watch that episode if you want to learn more about that, as always. I am Shane, or at smthomas3 on Twitter, so go ahead and follow me there. Also go to codekarate.com, sign up for the newsletter if you are not signed up already. Alright, so today we're going to go over hook theme and how you can use hook theme in your module. And, you, and we're going to show an example of how to build a theme function in your module. And a simple example of how to use a template file within your module. And if you're not familiar with the very basics of... Drupal theming, you may need to come to drupal.org and read some of the documentations, but we'll get through most of it right now. So we'll go ahead and come back to our site. You'll notice we have a pretty pretty basic Drupal 7 site. We have our module installed, so that we're good to go on that end. And we will go ahead and get started by creating a hook theme implementation. So we'll go ahead and add our comment here. And we're going to go ahead and grab this code here as just a very rough starter. We're going to be gutting most of this out, but it's a good placeholder. I'm just at the hook theme documentation on api.drupal.org. And replace hook with the name of your module. In this case, our module is called My Example. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of these bottom ones here, except for these two. And we're going to create two different examples here. The first one we're going to call my underscore example function. We're going to have a variable called text1, and we'll have a variable called text2. Like I said, this is going to be a very simple example to show you how a theme function and a theme template file can be used in a module. And these can of course be called whatever you want. I generally start mine with the name of the module first. It's not necessarily required but it's usually a good practice to follow. So we're going to get these to be basically identical for the most part. Now the big thing we're going to add here so we're going to add template and we're going to go ahead and give it give it our template file name. So we're going to call my example te underscore my underscore example underscore template. And this can be anything you want that you want to name your template file. If you come to the hook theme documentation, you can see all of the different um, various key keys that you can add to this array that you return. So variables defines any variables that are going to be used in your function or template. And this template value is the name of the actual template. So you can find that here and it says if it's specified this theme implementation is a template and this is the template file without an extension. So do not put the .tpl.php on the file because it will be added automatically. The next step here is we're going to come down to this page which or this callback function which is called when you go to my page dash html and we're going to revamp this a little bit here we're going to go ahead and use it define our text one and we're going to return theme so this is actually going to be calling our theme function we're going to call my example function which we haven't defined yet, we'll do here in a second. And we give it an array of the variables that we want to pass in. So for text1, 
going to go ahead and pass in our variable. And as another example, for text2, we'll go ahead and just add a static string. And you should be using you know, the t function that Drupal provides, but we'll just hurry up and breeze through this. Uh, one thing to note is, like I said before, we haven't defined this yet, and this isn't really a realistic use case. If you're going to do this, I mean, there's a probably easier, you, you could go ahead and just call the theme function from your page callback. But what I'm assuming here is in this step, you're going to maybe be pulling values from the database, doing some processing, you know, where you actually need to populate or pull out what these values are going to be. In this example, we're just using some static text, but you'll get the idea. The next step is to actually go ahead and define this theme function. I'm going to come down to the bottom. And any theme function that you d define in your module always starts with theme underscore. And after you enter in the theme underscore, you're going to pull out the name of the actual theme function. And this is just the default. You can actually, in hook theme, you can define the function name. But if you do not, it will go ahead and name it theme underscore whatever the theme name is. So we've got theme underscore my underscore example underscore function. And it's going to take one variable. We're going to call this variables. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and add some output here that we're going to be printing to the screen. We're going to keep it relatively simple here. And your variables are going to be passed in inside of that variables array. So you can see I'm referencing text1, which is going to be passed in this value here. Text2 will be this value here. You can see this is somewhat similar to how it was done before. And the reason you want, or one of the reasons you're going to want to use theme functions versus just printing out the HTML here is by adding a theme function, you're allowing a theme developer to override this output in their template.php file, so on the actual theme. That means one theme may define it to be output one way, where another theme could, of course, output it a completely different way using these same variables that you're passing in. So you notice I add an h2 tag with text1 in it, add a paragraph tag with text2, and then I, you have to return the output. So there is that one. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that first. It's important now, anytime after you declare new theme functions, or declare a hook theme implementation, you need to go ahead and clear your cache. So I'm going to hop into Drush and go ahead and run Drush CC, clear the cache. I probably only need to clear out the theme registry, but I'm going to clear everything just to be sure. And I'm going to come over here and go to my page HTML. You'll notice very simple as this is text one, text two. If I examine the HTML of it, just an H2 and a paragraph tag right there. Pretty simple. Next step is, of course, the template file approach. So we're going to go ahead and revamp this a little bit. We're going to get rid of this section. And we are going to declare our variable at the beginning. As I said before, this would most likely be pulling out some values. For the output, we're going to go ahead and just create an array with a theme function. We want a theme, or excuse me, theme in this case is going to call the our hook theme implementation of my example template.
and the type in this case we're going to go ahead and do markup and we are then going to add our variables and this is just going to go ahead and add our variables in just like that and what this is going to do in this example is going to call our theme template and generate some markup that's going to then be displayed on the page this is just one way of doing it there's you know there's a whole bunch of different ways you can you know, in theory you can layer a whole bunch of different ones like using the renderable arrays to their fullest extent which is probably what you should be doing but if you just want a simple template to take over your entire page this would be one approach to do that it may not be using the renderable arrays to their full capabilities but at least gives you an idea of how that's going to work the next step is go going to be to actually create our template as it shows here it should be my underscore example underscore template and we have to add the dot tpl dot php extension and I just dropped this template that I created into the modules folder so it's exactly uh, in this you know same level as my example dot module and my example dot info file so just sitting in there with that and I added the same thing just add a little PHP with a comment and I added an h3 tag with a PHP print statement to print text one as you can see it's the variable gets pulled out and it becomes its own variable so it's dollar sign text one dollar sign text two I added a class here so we're going to be able to differentiate between the other page I'm going to go ahead and clear the cache for good luck hop back over here and go to my page dash renderable as you can see titles changed everything else looks about the same it's now an h3 with our class on it you can also see there's the paragraph tag with text 2 so that's just one of many ways to use template files there's many other uses than just that and as I've shown before there's also an example of how to create a theme function both this template file and this theme function can now be overridden in your theme so for instance if you created this module gave it to someone else they can copy this template file put it in their theme in either the base theme or the actual theme directory or a theme templates directory and they can go ahead and modify this HTML and are able to then override your theme functions that's it for this time. Next time we'll be talking about a whole nother topic. As always, follow me on Twitter at smthomas3, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.